Nature photography has come a long way, especially with drones. And I'm really excited today to introduce to you Nate Gaffney. Now, Nate is a Wallistaque First Nations photographer. He specializes in nature and his work is incredible. Okay, let's begin. So you actually have the drone in the air right now. I do, yeah. That's awesome. Can I see what you have? Yeah, for sure, so. What a beautiful scene. Yeah, right now it's flying over this, this lake in front of us and the fog is still kind of rolling off of it. Beautiful. There's actually a beaver like swimming around in the water. He gave me a warning sign, he heard the drone <laughs> thing. But, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, it's just magical. So how have drones really affected the work of photographers? Well, it's completely given us a new perspective. I mean, like, to think that you can see the land the way that an eagle might see it like, exactly. is, is incredible, right? So, Nate, this is the first photo. And when I saw it, I said, this is a brilliant shot. There must be a story behind this. Yeah, there is a story behind it. So, uh, I'm a Wallistic Way person, and, and that's basically a an indigenous person to the traditional Wabanaki territory. What is the Wabanaki territory? Yeah, so Wabanaki territory is comprised of some spots in Atlanta, Canada, uh, New Brunswick, uh, up into a little bit of Maine as well, and Nova Scotia. And in this entire area, this Wabanaki territory, there's a number of different cultures that exist here. So Wolustaque is one, is one of them, otherwise known as Maliseet. Okay. And so I'm a Maliseet First Nations. The photo of the eagle, or Jip Loggin, it's called in, in Maliseet, was a really cool story. Mm -hmm. I, I actually received a grant to go create my first photography book. And the book pitch was basically to uh, showcase traditional Wabanaki territory in all of the aspects of it. And a big part of that for me was wildlife. So that shot was taken in uh, Grand Manan, New Brunswick, in Dark Harbor. So oh yeah, it, I've been there. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful spot. And the fact that you have the color in the background, it just pulls it all together. I absolutely love it, Nate. Now, this is a waterfall shot, and you have that dynamic silkiness that you were talking about beforehand. Tell me a little bit about this picture, because it really grabs me. Yeah, so this photo is taken right behind us. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I took it last year, and you can see all of that beautiful yellow foliage there to the, the left side of the photo. And yeah. I would say my photography style has transitioned since I've taken this photo, but I, I chose to, to send you this one just because you know, it is a beautiful shot of a waterfall. And to me, it was one of the first shots that I got with a wide angle okay. that had a really interesting foreground that led up to that beautiful waterfall. Also, the timing of photography is, is really, really interesting because this tree that we see here, if we came here last week, we would have that tree with the, the beautiful, but you know what, it doesn't matter. We still got some, an amazing shot back there and I assume that you work with what you get, magic will happen, eh? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Now, with regards to your third photo, mm -hmm. this is an aerial shot. It is. And you are really good at aerial photography using your drone. Thank you. Can you tell me just a little bit about the technical, but more also about the, the sort of philosophical aspects of aerial? Why is it different? And what does it mean to you, sort of metaphorically, uh, heart and soul? The first time I put my drone in the sky, I fell in love because it was like, you know, I had dreamed about doing that here in New Brunswick. I, I hadn't had the chance to do that before. So I got my license, I got my drone, um, and I put it up into the, the air for the first time. And I just could not believe the, the sights that I was seeing. I actually put the drone up behind the house that I grew up in. And, and I got to see my neighborhood, at, my, my childhood neighborhood for the first time yeah. in an aerial perspective. And it was, it was just so amazing to think that like, you know, birds see this all day long and so you know from a philosophical perspective it's it's kind of like you're we've reached this we reached a point in our technology where you're actually able to to you know, transport your, your experience or your, your consciousness to a whole new level because you're able to experience from a perspective of a different animal almost and that that's an incredible thing it's like you're going beyond our limits with the drone and, and um, you're able to capture just beautiful sights.
beyond that, you're able to get this incredible footage where you like slow your drone down and you're able to kind of control that speed and have a really serene experience. And so, yeah, I think it's given photographers a brand new perspective on things. Okay. Now that the drone technology is actually accessible to yeah. photographers, um, you know, in the past it might have been too expensive or the technology just wasn't there, but you can pick up a drone for, you know, fairly cheap and take your photography the portfolio from here to there and provide your viewers with totally new perspectives on where they're from. Like some people don't even realize that this is New Brunswick from right. the drone photography. Like, where is that? It's like, well, that might be your backyard. Like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's really cool to give a kind of new understanding of where you are. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay, Nate, so this is uh, picture number four. And I initially said, wow, I actually want to be here right now. That's what I thought. And with regards to photography, if you can transport the viewer into your picture space and then actually wanting to be there, then you've, you've got the shot. Tell me about this picture. Well, I think it's interesting that you said the word transport because um, it, it's a picture of a canoe, obviously. Uh, but the reason, the reason why it really compelled to me, I, I was on the trip with my dad. We went to Mount Carlton. It was the first time I had spent a fall in, in Mount Carlton and we saw this canoe propped up on this piece of driftwood and mm -hmm. we started talking about how our ancestors used canoes to traverse lakes and, and rivers and streams yeah. together. And so it was just this really powerful moment where we were looking at you know a modern canoe but it was kind of taking us back in time thinking about what, what our people would have been doing on the lakes and rivers and so. Now the fifth picture it's such a, a stunning use of depth of field. Now, for those who don't know what that means, please uh, tell us the technical part of depth of field and then sort of what this picture means to you. Yeah, so a basic understanding of depth of field, I guess, would be if you have, you know, if you're focused on an object, but there, there's, there's clearly other objects in front of it that are blurred out, or vice versa, if there's a, an object in the foreground but then the background is blurred out, mm -hmm. that's playing with the depth of field. And so you can kind of adjust it so that you know, you get all the detail in the photo, so everything in the photo is very sharp, or you can change it so that only one part of the photo is focused on and everything else is blurred out. And so having that in mind, I was in a field of uh, lupins, again on Grand Manan Island, across from Swallowtail Lighthouse, and the, the color of the lupins was just incredible. This was back in July, which is uh, lupin season. And so now July is really special because, you know, lupins are around and you can get some great photos because of them. Oh, I feel the warmth in this picture. Mm. It's a little bit cold right now because <laughs> of the fall is here, but this warms me up. And that's exactly what you want as a photographer. You transport someone, like I said, into the environment. And I feel warm, I feel happy when I look at this picture. Nate. The top five was great. I had such a blast photographing with you this morning. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with with regards to your future nature photography or whatever you branch out into. This was exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, talk soon. Well, I learned so much during that session with Nate, both technically and philosophically. Also, it's really interesting to see how Nate's heritage of Wallistoque First Nations informs his photography. I learned a lot and hopefully you did as well. See you in the next episode.